Hey, I'm from Students. Today we're going to do a review of polynomials. Now, uh, this is a review for an Algebra 2, for a high school Algebra 2 class uh, in polynomials. There are so many things to say about polynomials, but we're not going to talk about all of them. In particular, we're going to talk about one variable polynomials, not multivariate, just one variable. So if you're looking for x's and y's and z's and w's and all sorts of other things, no, 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 no. X is it for us. Uh, and, well, like I said, it's a high school review. Okay, so, first, what's a polynomial, okay? Well, it means, let's see, polynomial, poly means many, and nomial means numbers, okay? So it's many numbers. So polynomials are really a lot like numbers. They act sort of like numbers. But what are they in particular? Well, it's the sum... Hmm. Let me get that out of the way. Is the sum of terms. What's a term? A term looks like this. It's got three parts to it. It's got the coefficient, which is a real number. It's got x, or some variable. So, variable. And then it's got an exponent, x to the something. And that exponent has to be a whole number. And if you've forgotten what a whole number is, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Those are the whole numbers. All right. So, well let's let's look at uh, let's look at some examples. Um, let's look at well these. Uh, y equals 3x minus 1 half x squared minus 17. It's a polynomial. Each term, here's one term. Here's another term. Here's another term. Okay? Each term has a coefficient, 3, a variable, x, and an exponent. Well, there's no exponent there, but if there's no exponent, that means x to the 1 power. Coefficient, negative 1 half, x, and an exponent, 2. That's a whole number. That's good. Coefficient, negative 17, but there's no variable or exponent. That's okay. Think x to the 0 power. x to the 0 is 1, right? Well, that makes 1, or any multiple of 1, in other words, any number, legitimate, as far as uh, uh, being a term of a polynomial goes. So yes, that is a polynomial. Is this a polynomial? Uh-huh. Yes, it is a polynomial. Why? Well, if this term is a poly if this is a term, then this is also a term, and this is what you call a monomial. Okay? Instead of polynomial, monomial. Mono being one. By the way, three terms, we call that a trinomial. Binomial? Bet you can guess what that means. Okay. Moving on. Is this a polynomial? We have 2x to the fifth minus the square root of x plus the... Whoa. No. Square root of x. The square root of x is actually x to the one-half power, and that's not a whole number. So that means this is not a polynomial. If one term doesn't make it, the whole thing doesn't make it. Is this a polynomial? I would say, yes, it is. And you might be saying, hey, you just said no square roots. No, I didn't. I said you can't take the square root of x. But this guy right here, this is perfectly fine. The coefficient is negative square root of 3. Like I said, that has to be a real number. It is a real number. There's your variable to the 1 power. It's perfectly cool. So this is a polynomial. Uh, is this a polynomial? No. Why not? That guy. 1 over x. 1 over x is actually x to the negative 1 power, and negative 1 is not an acceptable exponent. The exponents have to be whole numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, not that. So no, this is not a polynomial. x to the fifth. Is that a polynomial? Yeah. Okay. It's a polynomial. It's, it's another monomial, and, uh, and it's perfectly fine. Uh, what about x to the fourth plus 5 times x to the 2.5 minus... Nope. 2.5 is not a whole number. This is not a polynomial. And let's look at this last one. y equals negative the square root of 10 times x cubed minus pi x squared plus 4x to the fifth plus 3.2. Weird stuff going on here, but it's completely legitimate. This is one term. This is another term. This is another term. And here's the last term. Each one has a coefficient which is a real number, like negative square root of 10, or negative pi, or positive 4, or positive 3.2. 
and each one has x to a whole number power, this one being x to the zero power. Okay? So those, the ones that I did not cross out, those are our polynomials. And every polynomial can be written in what is called standard form, and I strongly recommend that you write your polynomials in standard form. And standard form is easy to do. All you have to do is make the exponents go down in descending order. And this is what I'm talking about. Uh, 2, 1, 0. Okay? So this is going to be negative 1 half x squared plus 3x, that's that one, minus 17. Which, if you remember when you're studying quadratic uh, uh, functions, that's standard form of a quadratic function. Your x squared term, then your x term, then your constant. Okay? This is a monomial, which is automatically written in standard form. Uh, let's see, this one here is going to be, uh, what's my biggest, ooh, that's my biggest exponent. So this is negative x to the seventh plus x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 3x squared minus the square root of 3 times x. And that is that polynomial written in standard form. The monomial is automatically in standard form. That's fine. And this last one would be 4x to the fifth. Uh, minus square root of 10 times x cubed minus pi times x squared plus 3.2. There we go. Now, one of the reasons that I want you to write your polynomials in standard form is because that first term is the most important term. Okay? There's two, uh, two characteristics of the polynomial that I want to focus on. One is the degree of the polynomial and one is the leading coefficient. Okay? The degree of this one, that's your first exponent. It's your biggest exponent. So the degree of this one is 2, and the leading coefficient is negative 1 half. Uh, here, the degree is 0, because it's times x to the 0. And the leading coefficient is 4. Here, the degree is 7, and your leading coefficient is negative 1. Uh, mm -hmm -hmm. Here, your degree is 5, and your leading coefficient is 4, okay? So, in a second, we're going to look at graphs, and uh, the, the degrees and the leading coefficients are going to be, uh, uh, well, I'm going to show you how they relate with the graphs, okay? So, let's just go on in here. Let's look at some graphs. Here's a graph, and you may be thinking to yourself, that's just a line. This is, not, this is not interesting. This is just the graph of a line. Yeah, well, lines are polynomials. Okay? You may remember that the, the uh, equation for a line is y equals ax plus b, or some people say mx plus b. Well, uh, that means x to the 1 power. It's a 1 degree polynomial, and the leading coefficient is a. Okay? Now, what do we know about this? We know, like I said, the degree is 1. And what I know about my leading coefficient is it's positive. It's greater than zero. How do I know it's positive? Because the slope is positive. That's what the leading coefficient is of a linear uh, polynomial. Okay? Linear meaning one degree. So that's pretty easy. Degree is one. Leading coefficient is greater than zero. Uh, what about this one here? Uh -huh. Well, let's see. This one here, the degree appears to be two because this appears to be a, uh, um, a quadratic function. This looks like a, uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, parabola. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, so uh, that would mean this is ax squared plus bx plus c. And like I said, second degree polynomial. And for this one, the leading coefficient, a, if you remember your quadratic functions, a would be less than zero. Why? Because when A is greater than zero, it looks like this, and when A is less than zero, it looks like this. Now, um, I think the degree is two. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure the degree is two, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, okay, let's move on. Okay, here, this is interesting. Here I see what appears to be a cubic function. And I say it appears to be a cubic function because it's coming up and it changes direction once and it changes direction twice. Okay? 
So look at your change of directions. And if it changes directions two times, that means your degree must be at least, it, it's got to be greater than the number of, uh, of direction changes. So the degree's got to be at least three, okay? The other thing I know about the degree of this one is it's odd, okay? How do I know it's an odd degree? Odd degrees go from bottom, wiggle, 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 to top. Or perhaps they'll go from top, wiggle, 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 to bottom. Even degrees don't do that. Even degrees either go from above, wiggle, 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 up, back to above, or below, wiggle, 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 down below, like that. By the way, those are terrible drawings, so don't think that those are good polynomials. They're smoother than what I drew. Uh, so this is, uh, is a third degree polynomial. It certainly looked well. It looks like a third degree polynomial. There could be another little wiggle in there that I don't see. So it might actually be a fifth degree polynomial or even a seventh degree polynomial. And the wiggles are just very, very subtle and I don't see them. But I know it, it looks like a third degree and I know it's got to be an odd degree and that it's got to be uh, uh, at least three. And the other thing I know is that the leading coefficient is greater than zero. Why do I know it's greater than zero? Why do I know it's a positive number? Because we're going from below to above. If you end up going up, it's a positive uh, leading coefficient. Next one, what do we see here? Well, what do I know about my degree? I know the degree is even because it's coming up and then going up. I know the degree is at least four. Why? Because this way, then change of directions, change of directions, change of directions, three changes of directions. So the degree's got to be at least one more than that. And the other thing I know is the leading coefficient is positive. Okay? Because we're going up, uh, up. The leading coefficient, look at the direction it's, it's, uh, it's going as x gets bigger and bigger. If it's going up, the leading coefficient is uh, positive. If it's going down, it's negative. And ha ha ha, what's happening here? I change directions once, twice, three times, four times, so the degree must be at least five. And I also know that the degree is odd, okay? It's not six. It could be seven. It's not eight. It could be nine, all right? It's got to be an odd degree. It's got to be at least five. And I know that the leading coefficient is dropping down to negative infinity. That means it's negative. The leading coefficient is negative this time, okay? So just by looking at the graph, you can fairly quickly tell something about the degree and something about the leading coefficient, okay? So here are the five graphs we just looked at. And like I said, as we look at these, we can pretty quickly tell, okay, this one's, uh, uh, this one and this one and this one are all odd degrees because they're, uh, uh, they're starting from below and ending up above or starting from above and ending down below. This one and this one are even degrees. Why? Because you're ending up where you came from. If you started down below, you're ending up down below. If you started up above, you're ending up above. And uh, uh, the ones that have a leading coefficient are a, a positive leading coefficient are this one and this one and this one. And that's because when you go to the right, it's going up. And the ones with a negative leading coefficient are this one and this one. And that's because uh, as x is going up, y is going down. Okay? Now, there's one more thing about the graphs that I want to point out, and that is the x-intercept. The x-intercept, which is also sometimes called the root, and actually, there can be more than one, so I'm going to use a plural here. X-intercepts, or roots, or sometimes called zeros. They're called zeros because they're points where the y-coordinate is zero. All right? And notice, with the odd uh, with the odd degree polynomials, this one and this one and this one, um, you, uh, it crosses the x-axis an odd number of times. Here one time, here three times, here three times. And with the even uh, degree polynomials, it always crosses the x-axis an even number of times. Here two times, 
here two times. Also, with the even degree polynomials, it could not cross the x-axis. There could be no uh, real roots or real zeros. It could look like that, okay? That's an even degree polynomial that doesn't have any x-intercepts, okay? So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna look at those, uh, those roots uh, or x-intercepts or zeros in a few minutes. Okay, adding and subtracting polynomials. Okay, a few minutes ago I said that polynomials are really a lot like numbers. I think I said that. If I didn't, I'm saying it now. Polynomials are a lot like numbers. So when you're adding or subtracting polynomials, it's just like adding and subtracting numbers. Here's a polynomial, here's a polynomial. I'm going to add f of x plus g of x. x squared minus 3x plus 7, that's f of x. x cubed minus 4x uh, squared plus 11x plus 3, that's g of x. Add them up. Notice, I line them up to the right just like I would line up numbers uh, uh, if, if I were adding numbers. Uh, also notice that I'm keeping my terms above each other because place value is important just like when you're adding numbers. 7 plus 3 is 10, negative 3 plus 11 is 8, uh, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and x cubed, and that's our answer. Oops, put a plus in there, okay? And that's our answer, okay? Pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's look at another one. Uh, this time we have x to the fourth, and I'm going to leave a little gap here, plus 11x squared, and I'm going to leave another little gap, with minus 5. Why am I leaving gaps? Because I just said a second ago, place value is important, okay? Here would be my x cubes, here would be my x's. So now when I add this one, I'm going to put negative 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x plus 14 and add those up. Negative 5 plus 14 is 9 minus 8x, that's plus 13x squared minus 3x cubed and x to the fourth that's your answer, okay? So be careful with that place value. Let's do another one. This time we are, oh, this time we're subtracting, okay? And subtraction is just like addition, only you change the sign of the thing that you're subtracting. So I'm gonna take a negative x cubed plus three x squared plus five x minus 12, and I'm gonna subtract from it negative 4x cubed, oops, skip a space there, plus 3x plus 14. And the thing that I'm going to do when I subtract is I'm just going to change all the signs and then add. Just like, think about it, when you're subtracting numbers, 5 plus negative 2 is just, well, 5 minus 2 is just like 5 plus negative 2. You change the sign of the 2 and you add instead of subtract. So I'm going to say uh, plus 4x cubed and minus 3x and minus 14. Okay, and now uh, this is going to be negative 26, this is going to be 2x, this is going to be 3x squared, and let's put a plus there, and this is going to be 3x cubed, and that's my answer. Multiplying polynomials. You can also multiply polynomials. And uh, did I say yet that they're just like numbers? Because they are just like numbers. Okay, if I were going to multiply a three-digit number times a three-digit number and I happen to not have a calculator handy, well, what would I do? I would do 2x cubed, let me leave a space for place, but, but, you know something, this time I'm just going to say plus 0x squared instead of leaving a gap there, and I'll show you why in just a second, plus 8x plus 3, and here I'm going to write x squared minus 3x plus 5, okay. And I'm going to multiply this just like I would if this were a three-digit number and this were a four-digit number. Five times three is 15. Five times eight is 40. Five times zero is zero. Five times two is 10, okay? Only reason I have the zero there is it really makes me focus on the place value, on not accidentally uh, getting not accidentally adding terms that are not like terms, okay? Uh, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9x. Uh, negative 3x times 8x is uh, negative 24x squared. Negative 3x times 0 is 0. Uh, negative 3x times 2x cubed is negative 6x to the fourth. 
And then x squared times 3 is 3x squared. x squared times 8 is 24x cubed. x squared times 0x squared is 0x to the 4th. And x squared times 2x cubed is 2x to the 5th. And I add all those up, and I get 15, 31x, 0, negative 24, that's going to be minus 21x squared. Oops, put a plus there. Uh, 10 plus 24 is 34x cubed. Negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6x to the 4th, and 2x to the 5th. There you go. That's your answer. It's long, it's messy, it's kind of tedious, but it can be done. All right. Now, we added, we subtracted, we multiplied. You can also divide polynomials. There's a different uh, video about dividing polynomials. Look up my video on dividing polynomials. After that, look up my, div look up my video on uh, synthetic division, because synthetic division is a nice shortcut for division, and we'll be doing it in just a second. Okay, so let's say we want to factor this guy right there. We're going to look at factoring polynomials now. This is the last part of this video, factoring and finding the roots. And mainly we're going to look at cubic polynomials, but uh, we'll, I think we'll look at one quartic. That quartic means fourth degree. Uh, so I have 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 32x plus 80, and I want to factor this guy. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try factoring by grouping. And this is what you do. Take your first two terms. Factor out anything you can. Uh, so I can factor out an x squared from this. And x squared times what is 2x cubed? It would be times 2x. And x squared times what is negative 5x squared? That would be negative 5. So this is x squared times 2x minus 5, those two terms there. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at these two terms, and I'm also going to try to factor out a 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5. Okay, so what times 2x is negative 32x? That would be negative 16. And if it works, then negative 16 times negative 5 is positive 80, and it does. Okay? Factoring by grouping doesn't always work. But when it does work, it works pretty fast. So now I've got this, and what I can do is I can factor out the 2x minus 5, and I'm left with x squared minus 16. See? Just think of this 2x minus 5 as one thing to remove, to, to, uh, to pull out. And uh, shoot, I'm done. not quite done. x squared minus 16, I can factor that. This is x plus 4 times x minus 4, and don't forget your 2x minus 5. And now we have successfully factored our polynomial into three factors, okay? If it's a third degree polynomial, you're going to get at most three factors, okay? Uh, all right, now, one more thing I want to do. I want to, oh, I want to look at the roots, okay? The roots, how do you find the roots? You set this thing equal to zero. And once you factor it, that means I'm setting my factors equal to zero, and it becomes really easy. Easy. It means either x plus 4 equals zero, which means x equals negative 4, or x minus 4 equals zero, which means x equals 4, or 2x minus 5 equals zero, which means 2x equals 5, which means, divide by 2, x equals 2.5. Those are my three roots. And now, if I graph it, I will see, sure enough, Negative 4, 4 is right there, and 2.5 is right there, okay? Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, what if I just start with the graph? Couldn't I go backwards? Well, yes, you can, you little cheater, you. As a matter of fact, you can. So what if, at the very beginning, I just said, I'm just going to take that polynomial and graph it and start from the roots and get my factors from those. Yes, you can do that. If one of your roots is negative 4, then one of your factors is x plus 4. If one of your roots is 2.5, then one of your factors is x minus 2.5. And if one of your roots is 4, then one of your factors is x minus 4. Now, notice though, if I were to multiply all of these together, my first term would be x times x times x, which is x cubed. My first term here is 2x cubed, so what that means is that leading coefficient, that goes in front. So this equals this. And when we have a polynomial that has 
integers as our coefficients, we really like to have integers in our factors as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to distribute it over this one right here, the one with the non-integer uh, factor. So I'm going to get x plus 4 times 2x minus 5, that's distributing that 2 over that factor there, times x minus 4. And now what you'll see is those are the exact same factors that we got when we did it algebraically. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. x cubed plus 9x squared plus 7x plus 63. Well, let's see. If I, uh, if I take this, uh, these, two, these two terms here, I can factor out an x squared, and I'm left with uh, x plus 9, right? Yeah. And so let's hopefully I can get x plus 9 over here. And I can. Yes, it works. Plus 7. 7 times x is 7x, and 7 times 9 is 63. So what does that mean? It means I have x squared plus 7 times x plus 9. And uh, so what does that mean? Well, uh, can I keep going? No, I can't keep going. Last time I could keep going because I had the difference of squares. I had x squared minus 16. You can't factor the difference of cubes. I'm sorry, you can't factor the sum of squares. You can factor the difference of cubes. I'll get that later. But you, you, uh, uh, you can't factor the sum of squares. So as far as factoring goes, we're done here. You can, however, get the roots, because what this means is one of my roots is negative 9 for x, x plus 9, because x plus 9 equals 0 gives me x equals negative 9. And uh, the other two roots are going to come from x squared plus 7. So that means I'm going I'm to set x squared plus 7 equal to 0, which means x squared equals negative 7. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 7. And the square root of negative 7 is, uh, that's the square root of 7 times the square root of negative 1, right? Which is the square root of 7 times i. So that means this is the square root of 7 times i or negative square root of 7 times i. So my three roots are negative 9. Uh, square root of 7 times i, or negative square root of 7 times i. Three roots for a third degree polynomial. All right? And if, you were, if we were to graph this guy, we would see two direction changes, which indicates uh, probably a third degree polynomial. And uh, it hits the x-axis at the point negative 9, 0. There is negative 9. Uh, but it doesn't hit the x-axis over here, which means you don't have two other real roots. The other roots that you have are uh, imaginary, and sure enough, yes, they are. All right, keep going. This time we have x cubed minus 3x squared uh, minus 6x plus 8. So uh, let's see. I can factor out an x squared there, and I'm left with x minus 3. So let me see if I can get another x minus 3 here. Uh, negative 6 times x is negative 6x. And negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18, not positive 8. So this does not work. We're not going to use factoring by grouping. Well, shoot. If you can't use factoring by grouping, uh, oh yeah, the graph. There's our graph, and well, done. Those are our roots, negative 2, 1, and 4. So what are our factors? x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 4. Look, Mom, no algebra. I did it all from the graph. And if you multiply these things together, I swear, it will come out to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. Graphs are really, really handy. Now, in the old days, in the, back in the old days, uh, we didn't have graphs at our fingertips like we do now. So what did we do then? We complained a lot, okay? Just use the graphs. They're really, really good for you. Uh, okay, so let's see. If I can do factoring by grouping, I would take out an x squared, x minus 11. Can I do x minus 11 over here? No, because 11 doesn't go into 23, so that's just not going to work. So no factoring by grouping for me this time. So that means I go to my graph, 
And what does it look like? It looks, woo, what is that? Okay, I recognize one of my roots, one zero. That's good. Uh, that is kind of messy and so is that. And as a matter of fact, if I zoom in, 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 I'll see this is 6.4142135622, blah, 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 Okay? It's an irrational root. So how can I find out exactly what it is? Well, use the one that you have. You know that one of your factors is going to be x minus 1, right? So how do you find that other factor? Divide it. Okay, this is where synthetic division comes in handy. I'm going to put a 1 right here, always put the root right in there, and then I'm going to put my uh, coefficients, 1, negative 11, 33, negative 23, boom, drop down to 1, 1 times 1 is 1, negative 10, negative 10, 23, 23, 0. You must get a remainder of 0. If you don't get a remainder of 0, then it's not a factor and something screwed up somewhere. So. Uh, make sure that you get a remainder of zero there. So what does that mean? It means that this is x squared minus 10x plus 23. Uh, so x squared minus 10x plus 23. And I know that this is prime. I know I can't factor it. And the way I know that I can't factor it is because if I did have factors, they would be x minus this irrational number uh, and x minus this irrational number. Um, so... Uh, so how can I find exactly what they are? Set this thing equal to zero. And this is pretty easily done by completing the square. x squared minus 10x equals negative 23. I subtracted 23 from both sides. Half of 10 is 5. Squared is 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. This is x minus 5 squared. And this is uh, 2. Taking the square root of both sides, I get x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. That means x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 2. So what are our three roots here? Our three roots are 1, x, uh, 5 minus the square root of 2, and 5 plus the square root of 2. That's what they are exactly. This decimal here, that's just an approximation, but this is what they are exactly. And you can take this and pop it into x, and you'll see that when you evaluate all of this, it turns out to be zero. Let's do another one. Uh, let me get to the chase. Factoring by grouping is not going to work, okay? Because we would get an x minus 10 here, and 10 doesn't go into 78. So we're just going to have to go straight to the graph. Where's that graph? There it is. So what do I see? I see that it has a root of 6, which means I have a factor of x minus 6. And I see that it's a, well, it's a cubic polynomial, which I already knew from that. But what I see is it only hits the x-axis once, which means I have two imaginary roots. And that corresponds to uh, a quadratic factor here that cannot be, well, yes, this factor cannot be factored any further. So how do I find out what this is? Synthetic division. Six. Uh, always put the root there. And then 1, negative 10, 37, negative 78. Draw my line. Drop down the 1, 6, negative 4, negative 24, 13, 78, 0. Okay. Again, you must have 0 in the, in the uh, remainder, otherwise it's not a factor. So what does this tell me? It tells me x squared minus 4x plus 13. Those are our factors. Okay. And now, what are our roots, or our zeros? Well, one is x equals 6, and the other ones are going to be, we're going to have to set this thing equal to 0. So x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0, an excellent candidate for completing the square. So x squared minus 4x, I subtract 13 from both sides, and I get negative 13 there. Half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so I'm adding 4 to both sides. And I get x minus 2 squared, that's what that is, equals, this is negative 9. And so take the square root of both sides, and I get x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Uh, let's see, negative 9 is 9 times negative 1, and the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is plus or minus 3i. Adding 2 to both sides, I get 2 plus or minus 3i. 
So one root is 2 plus 3i, and the other root is 2 minus 3i. And there you go. Those are our three roots. And if it's a third degree polynomial, it's going to have three roots, at most three roots. Okay? Let's do the next one. And uh, let's see. Ooh, this time we have a fourth degree polynomial. Cool. A quartic. A quartic polynomial. All right. Uh, try factoring by grouping. See what happens. Uh, I can factor out an x cubed this time. And I'm left with x minus 4. So let me try to get x minus 4 again over here. And this will be plus 27. And if I multiply 27 times negative 4, I get negative 108, and it works. So that means uh, I'm going to have x cubed plus 27 times x minus 4. Okay, now, let's talk about this factor right here. Notice, this is something cubed plus something cubed. It's the sum of cubes. Remember how you can factor the difference of squares? x squared minus something squared is going to be x minus that something times x plus that something. Well, this is going to be x plus 3 times another factor, okay? Take the cube root of x, is x, it's cube root of x cubed is x, cube root of 27 is 3. If this said x cubed minus 27, I would have an x minus 3 there. The other factor, you can memorize the, the formula, or you can just do what I do, which is just divide it, okay? Put negative 3 here, x cubed, x squared, x, 27, like that. Drop down the 1, negative 3, negative 3, 9, 9, negative 27, 0. Always, you must have a remainder of 0. So what does this mean? It means x squared minus 3x plus 9. Okay? Now, uh, this is always going to be a, uh, um, a, a prime factor here. It's a prime quadratic. Don't try to factor it anymore. But don't lose your other one, x minus 4. Okay? So now if we want to find out what, what the roots are, the roots are going to be x equals 1 is negative 3, 1 is 4, and the other one is what I get when I set that equal to 0. So this time, let's see, um, x squared minus 3x plus 9 equals 0. I don't want to complete the square this time. I'm just going to use a quadratic formula. I'm going to say a equals 1, b equals negative 3, c equals 9. So x equals positive 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1 times 9 is 36 over 2 times 1 is 2. And that's 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 over 2. And that's 3 plus or minus 27 is 9 times 3, so the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 3 is just square root of 3 over 2. Okay? And this is messy looking. Now, the way, the proper way to write uh, the complex numbers is real part plus or minus imaginary part. So what I'm going to write is 3 halves plus 3 root 3 over 2 times i, and 3 halves minus 3 root 3 over 2 times i, okay? 3 root 3 over 2, that's that part there, all right? And, of course, if we look at our uh, graph, what does it look like? It looks like uh, an even degree uh, polynomial with a leading coefficient that is positive, okay? And sure enough, even degree, positive leading coefficient, leading coefficient of 1. And uh, what else does it look like? Well, it's not a parabola. It's got that extra wiggle in there. So it's at least a fourth degree polynomial. And sure enough, it is a fourth degree polynomial. Uh, one of its roots is negative 3, uh -huh, which means the factor is going to be x plus 3. Another root is 4, uh -huh, which means the factor is x minus 4. And the other roots are complex because it doesn't hit the x-axis any other place. And sure enough, that is true. All right. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next video.